preparation, been there. Um, we've been trying to come together as one. Um, that's, you know, um, the Titans. And, um, you know, now it's just time to put it together this Sunday. So I'm excited. Based on what you've seen from the offense, Jeff, you feel like they've, with the, all the changes, they've really got something to unveil on Sunday? I'm excited for our offense, man. I'm excited, um, you know, just, you know, um, for TK, you know, his first year. I mean, well, not technically for, well, yeah, first year basically as an offense coordinator here. Um, I'm excited for him. You know, I look forward to him, you know, calling some good games. Um, you know, they we had our battles during camp. You know, a lot of playmakers on that side of the ball. You know, we're gonna, we got to help each other out. Um, them scoring points and us stopping them to help them get good fit um, position, good fit advantage. So, I'm looking forward to our offense, you know, uh, scoring a lot of points this year. 24 new players on the 53. That's the most the Tennessee Titans have ever had in terms of roster turnover from one year to another. How is it different prepping for week one and for a new season with as many new faces as there's ever been for you here? I mean, I, I don't think that actually matters. Um, I think pretty much a lot of these guys that's on that roster and on this roster have been here since OTAs or mini camp, whatever it may be. They went through training camp with us. So, um, like I said, everyone here, um, we have this, we get the same message. We practice the same. Everyone had to prepare like they're a starter. And that's the way uh, things ran around here. Um, that's how Coach Ray uh, sent his message out to us. And, you know, I, I, like I said, this, this roster is built, you know, from down to up. You know, it's our job to go out there and execute whatever it is. Um, no matter who in the game, it's our job to execute. Last year, a, con last year a contract for, for Tannehill and Henry. I know those guys aren't thinking about it, but you imagine if it is their last time here, they want to go out big? I'm sure they're not thinking about that. I'm contract don't got nothing to do with the Saints right now. So I'm now I can't answer anything dealing with their contract and what they or what's on their mind. The only thing I hope is on their mind is winning against the New Orleans Saints. The Last offensive one. line talks about how much you guys have going against you guys on the defensive side of the ball has helped them get better. Have you seen noticeable improvement from those guys since the start of OTAs again? Yeah, man. I mean, that's the whole point of this this game of football. Each day we're trying to get each other better. Um, you know, going against, you know, um, Skoronsky, going against Brew, going against, um, you know, the other guys in that room, you know, um, Brunsky. You know, it just – it's good work for all of us because, you know, um, one thing we, we – believe on the game of football, iron sharper iron. And, you know, each and every day you see different things from it, and we all trying to get better to, uh, for one ultimate goal. And, you know, we are all front, offensive line, defensive line, have to play better than um, New Orleans Saints offensive line, defensive line. So. Thanks, Jeff. You spend in the Dome, no agents as a fan of the Saints. Uh, I've probably been in one game. Yeah, I've probably been in one game because uh, I, I stay 45 minutes out. Yeah. But uh, we practice there often, though. We practice in the Dome, and also we practice in a, in a uh, practice facility, too. Mm -hmm. what, what is this exciting level for you, first NFL game and doing it back, you know, close to your hometown? Uh, it's, definitely, it's definitely exciting. It's a lot of – probably it's, it's a lot to go into it. Um, you, you just focus on a week of preparation. But uh, it's definitely going to be cool to see, like, many faces that I know around the uh, – in, inside the uh, – well, in the stands, many faces that I know. Cause they should be all coming down, but uh, just you know, just keep the main thing the main thing. And what have guys told you about the jump from preseason to regular season, and, and what do you kind of anticipate it being like? Uh, of course, it's gonna be you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a little different. You know, everybody, everybody just like everybody out there getting paid. So you know, you just gotta go out there and put your best foot forward. And I think you touched on earlier as far as fan support, you know, friends in the, in the stadium. How many do you think you'll have there, and what will that be like? I don't know. I, I don't want to put a number on it. I don't want to give you a, a big number and it'd be uh, less than that, but uh, I don't know. But it's, it's definitely going to be cool to uh, hear him there and see him there, so it's definitely going to be cool. How much confidence did you build during what you were able to do during the preseason, just some success you had? Well, confidence, that's a, that's an ongoing thing, so like, you know, you might, build, you might build confidence there, but like, it's ongoing, so like, throughout the year, even throughout now, like, even all these practices, you still got to build confidence day in and day out, so you can, you know, put it all out there on Sunday, where it really matters. What's the big play like? We talked to you about them uh, being more active, uh, trying to disrupt the football when the quarterback's getting ready to let the pass go. Have you seen them capitalize on those opportunities in practice and preseason to your guys' satis satisfaction? Yeah, I think um, they're putting a lot of emphasis on it, which is the big thing, right? It's cognitive. They're cognizant of it. They work it every single day. You know, it's got to become a habit for them, and we stressed it ever since uh, the end of 21 season. That's been a big point of emphasis, and they've embraced it, and they know that things like that help to change the game. So, um, yeah, we've been working.
a lot. With Landry coming back from the injury and you know what he's dealing with now, how do you go about managing his reps? He's played so many before. Yeah, it, to me, it's all about preparation, and there's a lot of ways to prepare. Um, some guys need a lot of reps on the field. He's a guy that doesn't. So when he's not able to be out there every single day, he's able to get those reps in the meeting room and walkthroughs, and I still think he has a, uh, a very good grasp of what we're trying to do, and when it's time come for him to hit the field, he'll be ready. So it's kind of like the law of diminishing returns, like that type of approach for him? Where... Sure, yeah, I, you could say that, and then you could also say that, you know, vets that have been in the system for a long time, you know, they're when they watch film and they understand what's going on, it's easier for them when they get on the field. How do you navigate that with a guy like Harold? You know, he plays 94%, he plays 90%. Whenever you bring it up with him, he, he bristles at the idea that, that playing less might help him produce more. But you now have the depth to, to allow him maybe to play less. Mike has talked about that. Sure. How do you, how do you talk to him about it or take him off the field without him being there? Yeah, well, Harold is an ultimate competitor, so he's never going to smile when you talk to him about reps or less reps, and that's a great thing. You want that in a player. The other part is just understanding how long the season is, right, how long a game may be, and then that we always need him at his best. And, um, you know, that's something that I'll manage, something that the head coach will manage and the defensive coordinator, but the bottom line is we're going to get his best every time he's on the field, period him missing the last few seasons. So uh, we'll definitely have our hands full and they got a seasoned quarterback in, uh, in Derek Carr who's been around. He's seen a lot of football. So it, it'll be a great challenge for us. What kind of things does Kendall Vildor bring to the room and, and your group back there? Uh, Kendall, he's played some meaningful football. I think he's had about 20, 30, 20, 25 starts over his career in three years. So uh, he brings uh, he brings some experience. He's a guy that we like. I think he has really good movement skills. So uh, we're excited just to get him up to speed, up to par. X play is something that you kind of talked about early on after you got hired uh, with an issue with this secondary last year. This is a good test having a guy like Carr who's you know willing to air it out and, and let it go deep. That's a great test. Uh, explosive plays is uh, they get you beat. Um, and teams normally score when they get explosives. So uh, in order to keep the points down, you have to limit the explosives. And I think we've been really working really hard during training camp uh, and during the preseason to uh, try to eliminate those. And the car is going to bring a, a, a big challenge because he does like to throw the deep balls. So our guys have to do a great job staying on top and defending it. Chris, obviously this is a big year for Chris. How uh, has he been, you know, through camp and just prepping up, getting ready to go home and face his own challenges? Yeah, I'm excited for Christian. Uh, Christian's done a really good job this training camp. Uh, he's really taken the coaching. Uh, he's really kind of coming into a leadership role of his own uh, in that room because we're not very uh, uh, old in the uh, corner, especially in the cornerback position. So he's kind of coming into a leadership role. He's embracing it, and I like where he is right now. And then McQuarrie, he's quietly had a really good camp to work with him. But we're not really talking a lot about him, but how is he doing? Roger's been good. Uh, he, he's one of my favorites. He, he's a tough guy. Uh, doesn't say much, but he just uh, does his job. He goes to work and doesn't have excuses for anything. And so he, he, he does things the right way. So I'm excited to watch him. Coming out of Auburn, they always had the thing about his short arms and that being such a detriment. But how is he even able to overcome it from your perspective? Because uh, he's a fighter. Um, he's scrappy. I mean, we, we've all got some deficiencies um, as a person, as a player. Um, everybody's dealing with something, and, and he's a guy that's just, he's scrappy, he's fighting, and he's going to give you everything he's got. And so, you know, I, I heard that coming out with him coming out. You know, he's got short arms, but it doesn't seem to affect him uh, being physical. Kind of an uh, interesting challenge, I'm sure, especially in, in your first year, too, having three QBs in the roster, two, two young guys. How do you go about getting them enough work, but also you know, working with Ryan, obviously, towards towards each game? Yeah, you know how most of the stuff works is the starter gets the majority of the reps during practice during the week, and then, uh, you know, the, the guys that are the backup in the backup spots, they're getting the scout team reps. They're throwing in between special teams. They're doing work after practice like we just did. So, um, you know, we have a plan, and, you know, the guys know the plan, and we've talked through how, how the reps are going to be split. And obviously they have put in work on their own, and then it's extra film time. So uh, we've got a plan for each of them, and uh, we like where it's going. Opportunity for development and growth slow down during the season as compared to, to training camp when there's a lot, a lot? No, I, I don't think so. And I, and I told both those guys, I said, look, you know, your job actually got harder now because both you guys have to know the game plan like you're the starter without getting the reps, but yet be able to go out there and operate 
whoever the opponent's offense is. So it's actually gotten harder for them, and uh, they've both done a good job of embracing it. Have you split three. scout team this week? Yeah, everybody's getting reps, so it's it's been good for everybody. So uh, you know we're out there; they're getting throws um, during special teams. So it's been it's been a good rotation for everybody. But for you, as someone charged with their development, how do you go about making sure that they continue? Malik continues to have the technique. Levis continues to learn the things that that needs to be learned. Right, and like I said, a lot of it's done during special teams. It's done after okay. practice. It's done in the film room. Um, so you know, make time. You know, some meet some of them. Sometimes all meet together, and then sometimes it's separate. Maybe Will just comes in. Maybe Malik just comes in. Maybe to address something specific that each of those guys have, but. They understand the task. They understand what, what their goal is now. But they also got to be a great caddy to Ryan, all right, because, you know, he can't see everything. So they have to help him with different aspects of things. And, you know, they may see something on the field that he doesn't see. So they have to be a great caddy for him, but then go out there and be able to operate the opponent's offense. So the players are the players. You know, they may call it one thing. We may call it another. And you just have to impress upon those guys. These are your game reps. When you're out here on the show team, like, that's your game rep. All right, we have that play. You run it like our, it's our play. You read it like it's our play. And that's how they get prepared to play.